I just bought a pump for my newest pond build. This pump is going to power a six metre long stream and a bog filter. It will sit inside an intake bay to help skim off surface debris. The pond itself will be three metres by six metres and I estimate it will hold approximately 3,500 to 4,000 litres. So I thought it would be a good time to talk about how I size the pump, determine head height, calculate flow rates for the stream, waterfalls and filters. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. So let's start with the flow rates. This pond is going to sit directly outside our living room window. The plan is to have quite a few goldfish in the pond, <laughs> cumbrant permitting. Now, I was going to just run a high flow DIY waterfall filter, <laughs> but I've changed my mind and decided I'm going a bog filter inside the stream. Because I want to keep quite a few fish and I like low maintenance, I'm going to oversize the bog a bit and have it at 25% the pond size. The way I determine the flow of water through the bog is I take the volume of the bog when completely empty and I times it by six. To keep it simple, in this situation, I estimate the bog is going to hold 1,000 litres, therefore I need to move 6,000 litres per hour through the bog. Now that doesn't mean I run out and I buy a 6,000 litre per hour pond pump. A 6,000 litre per hour pump will deliver 6,000 litres per hour if it's just pumping the water around within the pond. But I need to pump the water from the intake bay up into the bog. The elevation difference between the pond and the bog is approximately half a metre. This is called head height. The higher the head height, the less water will come out on the other end. All pumps will have a graph or a chart that will show how much flow can be expected at certain head heights. Pipe friction and fittings can also inhibit flow and therefore alter the head height. For that reason, I like to use flexible pipe at the highest diameter that the pump recommends. As a simple rule, I calculate that each one meter adds 10 centimeters to the head height. So after a few calculations, I know that I need a pump that can deliver 6,000 liters per hour at about 1.1 meters of head. The pump I bought for this pond is a Jaboa DCP 15,000. This is the same pump as what I'm using on my large pond. Up there I'm running four of them, one for each bog filter, there's two, one for the circulation jets and one for the stream. <laughs> this is not an ad and I'm not sponsored, I just really like the efficiency and the adjustability of these pumps. But if you are interested in these pumps, I will put a link in the description. The biggest downfall with them is they don't come with a long enough cable, so you'll need to extend them yourself or get an electrician to do it. But they are low volt and I like that. There are newer models and other brands offering similar flow rates at great efficiency, so they're worth checking out. But because I'm happy with what I have and I've used them before, I thought why change? <laughs> anyway, as usual, I've gotten sidetracked. So as we can see when we look at the chart, on this pump I can get a 6,000 litre flow rate at 2 metres of head height for only 62 watts of energy. And I think that's pretty awesome. Now you might be thinking, but Kev, you only need 6,000 litres at 1.1 metre head. And that's true, for the bog filter that's all I need. But I also want a stream, and to make a decent stream, you need a decent flow. I do have some guidelines I use for a stream and waterfall. If you want a nice gentle sound, you can get away with about 4,000 litres for 25 centimetres of stream width. If I want more noise and a good flow, I'll up that to 10,000 litres per 25 centimetres of width. And that's also going to create a reasonable waterfall. And then any excess flow, I'll send over the surface of the bog filter and on down the stream. This will also act as a breather pipe, preventing the bog from siphoning back into the pond if the pump shuts off. 
I have a couple of videos on the breather pipe, so I'll link those in the description if you want to learn more on that. Having the extra flow leaves more flexibility when I start building the stream. So in summary, when selecting the pump, the main things I want to achieve are having enough water move through the filter, in this case a bog filter. Remember to take into account the amount of head the elevation and pipe friction will create. If you aren't sure how much water needs to move through the filter or how big the filter needs to be, I have other videos that can help you. Secondly, I aim to make sure that I have enough flow to achieve any stream or waterfall objectives. Even if you don't wish to have a stream or a waterfall, in most cases I would still oversize the pump, just in case I need to add any jets in the future. Jets will help push water around in areas that lack circulation. In small ponds though, anything under a thousand litres, this won't be an issue and you can just pretty much stick with just enough water needed for the filter. And thirdly, I want to move that amount of water for the least amount of energy consumption. That's something I love about those Jaboa pumps. They're efficient and adjustable, so I have lots of wiggle room. All pumps will tell you how many watts they use, so the lower the wattage, the less they will cost to run. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope it's been helpful. If it has, give it a thumbs up. I'm going back to digging my pond. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.